I'm having a bit of a Banggood evening tonight, so this is another Banggood product, and I, I, these are not sponsored. I bought them myself, so I can say exactly what I want about them. And this, uh, I know fine well, this is a Quack product. It's a 200 kilowatt, 110, 250 volt household smart power saver. And I've, I've already taken some similar units to bits, but I thought I've not taken one of the aluminium cased ones to bits. So uh, here it is. And I know fine well these are sort of Quack products, but I quite enjoy them. I, I like the fact that they are Quack products. And this one, uh, apparently it turns your rough, squiggly sine wave into a perfectly smooth sine wave. And in doing so, and uh, not reading Chinese, uh, I think we can safely say that probably means that it's going to save you 20 to 60% off your electricity bill. And it's the Smart Chamberlain Power Savar. Okay. Oh, there's something else in there. It's a little tag. Okay. It says 110 200, 200, to 250 volt. So here's the unit, and it's smaller than I was expecting. I'm almost disappointed. I thought it was going to, especially when it's rated 200 kilowatts. Um, it's the 2015 model. Very, very modern. And uh, unlike the plug-in ones, it comes with two fuses. That could allude to the fact it's got a capacitor in it, as the others have, because when you've got a modestly sized capacitor in, and if you arc something with a plug, it can actually pop a fuse, because the, the capacitor will pass the transients of the arcing, it will basically pass that electrical noise. This is not earth either, which, uh, oh well, I'll just have to be very, very careful. I can guess what's inside this, but uh, let's uh, do the tests anyway. So let's get the power meter down. Now, previously, I've had units that had absolutely nothing inside. Well, they had a, they had the capacitor, but it wasn't connected. It, may, it might have been a safety thing. Uh, and the other one actually had the capacitor connected because it got a zap off the pins. Uh, and if it's got the capacitor, this will show no power, probably, or very little power, but it will show quite a high current. So let's uh, get the death adapter in and plug this in. Oop. Right, it's showing 0.3 watt which could just be the LED, actually, is that? Mm, mm, mm. Right, uh, yeah, the LED is very cheap and nasty. It's very, it's what a green gallium phosphide LED, the older technology, reliable but very dim. Can you even, oh, you can see it, it's flickering away there. 0.2 watts, let's see if there's capacitor, 245 volts, 469 milliamps. Let's note that down. So, uh, 0.46 nine amps and what was that uh, it was 245 volts uh, my current supply wasn't it uh, 245 volts we'll do the maths after this let's but let's open it up because it's very clear there is a capacitor inside this let's short these pins out with something oh it did it did spark yep there's a beefy capacitor in there right let's take a wee look Uh, it's, um, Torx. Right, one moment, I'm just going to have to grab my emergency screwdriver kit. The big Kamasa kit, which is just, uh, lots of random bits. Now, which bits are going to be, is it going to be that bit? Let's get this plug out. Nope. Is it going to be this one? Oh, they are so free to get out. Closer, but still a wee bit loose. This is this is where I find this one is too big. No, no, it fits, it fits. It's good. So let's uh, get this open and see what delights it has inside. The idea of these is that you plug it into a socket in your house or your factory and it miraculously saves you lots of power. And that's all you have to do is just plug it into a socket. And they usually work on the basis of power factor correction. It doesn't actually do anything in a household power bill. It doesn't even do much to an industrial power bill. The whole concept of power factor is that uh, if you have an inductive load, oh, oh, there's a circuit board in here. If you have an inductive load, there's the capacitor. If you have an inductive load, the sine wave, oh, hold on, let's, uh, let's doodle this. If that's the voltage, 
sine wave. If you have an inductive load, it lags. So it's at a, the if this is a voltage, the current is out of phase because of the way it's building up the um, magnetic field out of sync with the actual voltage. And capacitant, capacitors actually have a leading power factor, which means the, the current leads the voltage. And often in like old fluorescent fittings, you used to have the traditional choke, the, the buzzy fluorescent fittings. You'll often find a capacitor inside them to compensate for the lag of the choke because it makes the, the unit, it makes the fluorescent fitting draw power, it brings the power and voltage closer to unity where the voltage, they're, they're both in sync and that isn't read on home power meters but it is read in industrial meters so it can be quite useful in large installations like offices and stuff like that so uh, that's the concept behind it however, this is just a stab in the dark this is just like throwing a capac random value capacitor uh, and not knowing what sort of loads are in the house, so it's, it's pretty odd, it's I've seen the presentations of these where they basically have like the worst load possible, a big lossy motor with no load in it. So it's acting like a choke uh, or inductor. And they show it with a power meter and then they show it with a capacitor and it's a miraculous improvement, makes it look like the current's gone down. And it's just basically quackery again, it's just uh, being charlatans. But, uh, so here we have the arrangement here. We've got the mains coming in, it's uh, a, not polarised. So one connection goes straight to the capacitor. Um, here's the back here if you want to take a look. Very simple circuit board. We've got um, the other connection goes via the fuse. That's nice that they put a fuse in. There, then it goes to... Right, tell, let's doodle this down, shall we? So we've got the mains come in. Doesn't matter which way around it goes. There's a fuse in one leg. Then there's the big fat capacitor, which we've not worked out the value of that yet. Uh, I could theoretically calculate it from this using the formula capacitive reactants. We'll take a look at that afterwards. Uh, maybe it'll be printed on it, maybe I can just meter it. Uh, there is a resistor across the capacitor to discharge it, which is good. Hopefully a nice high value. And for the LED, we've got a diode... Ah, that's very simple. We've got um, basically a diode, a resistor, and the LED. So very simple, that's why it was looking so flickery. So what are these values? Well, that's 100k, 100k. This one is a four-band resistor. It's a four-band metal film resistor, my least favourite type. Yellow, violet, black, orange, 470, 3 zeros, 470k. That's a good value. That'll take a while to discharge that capacitor, because this looks very much like a capacitor you might find in some motors and domestic appliances or, or ceiling fans to give them direction or control the speed of them. So, uh this doesn't have anything written on it. Let's see if it comes off. Let's see if it's got anything. Oh, it's written on the circuit board. It's 6 microfarad, 450 volts. Is it 6 microfarad? It looks like it. Yeah, that looks like it's either a 5 or a 6. Uh, let's uh, meter it, and just to be sure, the resistor across the capacitor might skew it. But let's take a wee, let's try it out and see. We're looking for roughly six microfarads. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Five point eight is good enough. Even yep, that, that's pretty good. So uh, let's uh, oop, let's drop the meter, shall we? Unfortunately, it's quite robust. So let's uh, calculate that out. Um, so, using the formula, xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc, xc 
is the equivalent resistance of the, it's usually in ohms, and it's the equivalent resistance that that capacitor poses. And this is why when you've got, uh, when you've got LED lamps, like say for instance this one, and the, they're using this capacitor, uh, the capacitance reactants as a resistor. If you used an ordinary resistor in a series of these LEDs, the resistor would get red hot, it would dissipate a lot of power, it would be very inefficient. But by using a capacitor, it uh, you get the capacitive reactance effect. It's only allowing a portion through, it's tracking the sine wave and allowing a, a small portion through in each half sine of the sine wave. And that makes it much more efficient. It runs cold, except for LEDs, particularly if it's a 5 watt version of this particular light. But um, it, basically, you can use it as an alternative to a resistor, but it's much more efficient uh, for simple mains power supplies. Xc equals 1 over 2 pi f. In our case, that's 50 hertz, our supply here, not 60 hertz as in America, but 50 hertz in the UK, times c in farads. So, let's do the maths here. So just out of interest, uh, 2 times pi, which is 3.14, equals 6.28 times 50 hertz, equals 314 times, and that was 6 microfarads. So uh, do we actually, the, do we believe the meter? Uh, I think we'll go for 5.8. So 0 0.000058. Equals... Right, so we'll put that into memory. 1 divided by that memory recall equals 549. So the equivalent resistance here, Xc in ohms, is about 549 ohms. The RMS voltage was 245 volts. Uh, I equals V over R. So 200... Uh, oh, 245 volts divided by the capacitive reactance of 549 ohms equals 446 milliamps. It actually came out 469 milliamps, but some of that might be going through the LED. Not a lot of it, probably about 2 milliamps. So it's, it's pretty close. It's, it's not far off that. Um, so yes, it's these typical devices, they, it's a nice case, but they don't really actually do anything. But uh, people buy them, they plug them in, and they're convinced they're saving power. Probably because when they buy it, they're they're they've they, they're obviously buying it because they've you know they've got huge electricity bills, and usually at the same time as they buy these things, they decide to start saving power, they'll turn lights off, they'll turn the heating down a bit, and turning your heating down a bit makes a massive difference. If you just turn the heating to your house down by just one or two degrees, or in the case of the air conditioning, if you just nudge it up by a couple of degrees, you'll find that it makes a significant saving. And generally speaking, when people buy one of these, uh, they're, they're told, you know, you can also save power by doing this, and, you know, turn the heating down, and say, you know, turn off loads as not being used. And as a result, they do end up making genuine savings, not directly as a result of this, but because of the placebo action that, you know, they got this and it encouraged them and they got that information to save power by using other means. But having said that, I quite like this because of its construction. I quite like the, it's a nice enough circuit board. It's sensibly laid out. It's the usual minimalist circuitry with the pointless green LED that basically just shows that the powers on that the fuse is intact. But I like the aluminium case. Uh, how's the clearance in this for uh, electrical connections? I like all quacky things. They're all, you know, it's all good really. So the tracks are well clear of the side. There's good clearance there. And this, yeah, this is, the, all the components are well clear of the case, so it's not that bad, actually. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting enough. It's a, it's a quite a cute little device. It is a naughty charlatan device, but it's, uh, but it's quite cute nonetheless. It's, it's quite a neat little thing. 
I thought I'd do one more test with a more accurate, dedicated capacitance meter because the multimeters, although they're very good, the you know things like capacitance is always a slight compromise. So uh, here's a dedicated capacitance meter. All it does is capacitance. It's what its speciality is, and it's saying 6.13 microfarads. So if we do the maths again, based on that, so that uh, let's uh, clear everything. So. Pi times 2 times 50 hertz equals 214 times 0 0.00061, uh, I'm running out of digits here, equals uh, memory plus. Uh, so x equals 1 over 2 pi fc, so 1 divided by that, divided by memory recall, equals, this time I get the more accurate capacitance value of 522 ohms, 245 volts, 245 volts divided by the 522 ohms of the capacitive reactants equals 0.469. That's exactly what I got measuring the current uh, on the uh, power meter. So that just shows you that, you know, capacitive, capacitive reactants, it really does have a direct relationship to the sort of ohms when you use that formula. It's quite nice when uh, things like that work out so well. But yeah, yeah, good toy. I like it. It's just quite a neat little thing altogether.